Okay, I'm Bobby Weir. I live in Marin County here in California and I play music. I play with Rat Dog and The Dead. And how long have you been playing music? I've been doing this for about 40 years. When you saw a white kid with threads, were you in, what did you think? Were you intrigued? Did you think there was some spiritual or religious significance or what, what were your thoughts? It looked kind of right. Um, I'm not sure I totally understand um, what it is they're going for there. I, you know, I was in Jamaica one time and I tried to tried to get uh, a handle on what it, what Rasta was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I'd go and hang with Rastas and every time I every every different Rasta I would hang, hang with would have a completely different uh, view of what Rasta amounted to. It wasn't like I asked him, okay, what's Rasta all about? But, you know, I just tried to hang with them and sort of glean what it was that they were up to, what, what, what sort of belief system they had or whatever. And um, never did get anywhere with that. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I, I couldn't uh, make heads or tails of it. So that's cool. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty amorphous, but at the same time, there's something happening there that they seem to agree on on a non-specific level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to some degree, I, I, I sort of buy into it. Uh, it's not like I'm, you know, it's not like, well, I don't have the kind of hair that's gonna, that's gonna go dread anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like I say, I kind of buy into it and uh, and at least, you know, the, the, the Rastas in, in Jamaica, that whole situation arose from, um, it, it, it's a grassroots sort of, uh, I don't want to call it religion, it's a worldview, I think, uh, cum religion that, that arose out of years of persecution and uh, oppression and stuff like that. And to a much lesser degree, um, these... I want to say somewhat alienated kids, these um, marginalized kids from uh, from our culture, white kids from our culture, find themselves alienated or persecuted. Some of it may be more perceived than real. Some of it may may be more real, though somewhat more ethereal. I mean, you know, the kind of uh, oppression that. What what is it that that might have attracted them to your music, to Grateful Dead music? What is what is because you don't see them following around the almonds or the eagles or going to Jimmy Buffett shows. They're really attracted to this kind of music. What is it in the music that that strikes that chord with them? Do you think? Well, okay, I, I think that's pretty easy. The music, the kind of music that we play, is very very open ended, and uh, and when we hit the stage. We have a rough game plan. It, that's that's as far as it goes, and and really, um, it's every man for himself. But what we're trying to do is build something together, and we have no idea what it is. So it's it's a it's a sort of a individual, and at the same time, a, a group exercise in faith, uh, faith in our abilities, faith in our direction, musical. Um, but you know that becomes a spiritual matter as well because music. Music is a spiritual matter for us, and um, I think these these kids kind of live their lives that live their lives that way, and um, you know, their lives are more or less an exercise in faith, mm -hmm. and um, it's their faith in their direction and in their footsteps, and um, and so we kind of dovetail there. We kind of, you know, they understand what it is that we're up to, and I think to that degree, I kind of understand what they're up to. Mm -hmm. the, um, the other night you also sang Throwing Stones. The kids, they dance, shake their bones while the politicians are doing their thing. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to me, we've talked to a bunch of the kids, that they would rather, they would rather be dancing, metaphorically, mm -hmm. than sort of engaging in the um, struggling with the sort of social and political issues of the time. They've chosen to opt out of that. Um, what's what's your take on that? Is that a valid um, valid choice? Okay, the, the, this is one of those answers where it is and it isn't. Um, what they do, what their expression, uh, what, what their expression is, what they're what they're expressing, is uh, is valid. 
Um, the joy, the elan, the, um, you know, the, the individual freedom that becomes a group consciousness that, they, uh, that they, they're expressing, that they're finding. Um, that's, that's valid, it's real, it's valid, um, but at the same time, these days, and I guess probably any, any, any time that you, you look at it, but certainly right now, there are people hard at work trying to um, enforce uh, a fairly narrow-minded uh, worldview on the rest of our culture, the rest of our society. And when those times come, I think there's a responsibility uh, for the um, for the outsiders to resist. I think if they if they if they intend to see that uh, lifestyle possible mm -hmm. in years to come, because. You'll, you'll see in media, for instance, in, uh, as uh, media becomes more centralized and, and, uh, and more um, coddling to, uh, to, well, at least these days, our, our government, that it will, um, it will dismiss these people as uh, irrational, as uh, it, the, the outsiders. It'll dismiss them as irrational, um, basically as losers, which is not the case. Um, but people have to, you know, have to, have to come to, you know, you're being, you're being labeled a loser. You have to just, uh, you just have to plug it up and say, hey, listen, I'm not a loser. Um, uh, au contraire, my friend. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that our founding fathers, when they laid out the government, um, Many of them were of this ilk, the outsider ilk, and they they laid out the constitution in such a way that the people of this ilk can and necessarily will have to from time to time um, clean house, mm -hmm. and it may very well be that that's what's um, imminent here. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, it's more or less the nature of our responsibility as outsiders is uh, if we want to be if we want to have that kind of freedom every now and again we're going to have to earn it we're going to have to pluck ourselves up and uh, and put a little something on the line I'm not exactly sure where because it's always going to be a, a fluid situation but there is going to there is going to be an element of risk involved uh, personal and group mm -hmm.